Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. It's around that time right here on KAZ Radio where I have one of my most favorite shows, none other than Gifts to the Body, with Lady Flo Ducker and Deborah A. Wright. Take it away, Lady Flo. Good evening. Good evening. Praise the Lord. And God bless you once again for joining us in the studio of KAZ with our hosts, Gift to the body. Amen. We have a special guest on this evening. Want to say a special warm God bless you. We love you. We miss you. To our faithful, beautiful, awesome, gifted co host, Evangelist Deborah Wright. Amen. We keep in the seat. We're keeping the seat warm for you, and we're sending healing and blessing and God's love your way. Amen. So again, welcome, amen, our listening audience to Gift to the Body. We have a very special um, guest with us on this evening. Some of you know her, amen. I am getting to know her and enjoying every second of it. (laughs) <laughs> amen. Apostle Barb E. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I'm so blessed to be here, woman of God, and thank you for the invitation. Amen. Really a pleasure. Amen. Truly. Yes, thank I you. Really spe- I really feel blessed and special that God connected us, that God made this happen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You know, God, he gave us his best um, his son, Jesus Christ, and Hallelujah. I just feel like he favored me, favored gift to the body with his best on this evening. All right. All right. Amen. By Good. having you here. Hallelujah. Amen. What a blessing. Yes, yes. And, you know, we just been uh, chopping it up, amen, while we were waiting on things to get set up, and the conversation has just been awesome Amen. Most yeah. of all, our reverence, our respect, our honor. Amen. To yes, our God. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Our honor, um, your commitment to the work. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, you know, that's one of the foundational scriptures that God gave gifts to the body. Amen. Amen. He yes, gave he some apostles and some prophets, some pastors, some mm-hmm. teachers mm-hmm. and evangelists for the work of the ministry. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's and, right. Yes, God. You know, sometimes people like you, you know, we we make it look easy. Mm. Amen. But it's work. It is work. Amen. It's work. Woman of God, and it is work. If people um uh, you know, want to be apostle, prophet, evangelist, and think that it's not work because you see uh, somebody on TV or Facebook Live or whatever with a huge following mm-hmm. and jets and oh, yes. material things right. and armor bearers and, you know, okay. all the frills. Uh-huh. Amen. If you get in there for any other reason. Yes, yes, Lord. Come on Amen. Now. Yes. Then counting the cost that this is work. Amen. That is ordained by God. Amen. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. Paul said, I ain't confer with flesh and blood. That's right. But he knew he was sent. That's right. Amen. By that's God. Right. That's right. And that's what keeps us motivated, keeps that fire burning, keep that passion, knowing that God called us and Glory that God, God chose us. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Before the foundation of the world that God, um, you know, adopted us, placed us in the body. Amen. Is it pleased him? It's yes. pleasing him. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, um, you know, it's a sacrifice. Amen. For sure. For sure. Amen. You know, I'm learning that as I um, reach out to people, you know, I shared that with you. Um, you know, the Bible says, and, and I shared that on the last broadcast, how I knew it was like my starting point to 
ministering, amen, I was reading the word and it leaped out the page, preached the word, even though my bishop and apostle at the time had prophesied and confirmed that I was called to preach the word and I preached my first sermon, you know, at the okay. church I was at. Okay. I was ordained a minister, an elder, but, you know, the word of God came to me even when I got saved. Amen. I got saved in the Justice Center. So we kind of acquaint ourselves. Amen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, um, I got saved in the Justice Center, and I didn't know much about the word of God. I was raised in a Lutheran church and went through the catechism where you learn the Ten Commandments and uh-huh. you wear the white and, you right, know, the right. pastor bless you or whatever. But I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. I had a reverence for the house of God, you okay. know. Okay, okay. And, um... But I remember being in the Justice Center, looking out the windows like my life was over. I had lost everything. Mm. And a Baptist preacher came um, and ministered to me the plan to salvation. And I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior, standing in the Justice Center hallway. And I heard the word of God, you know, after the demons came screaming out. I heard that. I experienced that standing Mm. in the justice in the hallway. The demons coming out of me, cursing God, swearing. And um, God spoke to me and he said, let's reason together. Jesus. Though your sins be red as scarlet, I'll mm-hmm. make them white like snow. Yes. And I never knew that was in the Bible. I, I didn't know nothing in the Bible. Maybe Jesus wept or God so loved the world, you okay. know. Okay, okay. Because, um, you know, I was in church from a child and then I strayed. And I mean, I strayed, I strayed. It's part of my testimony. But... How real and alive the word of God is. I know you know, Apostle. Yes, you know yes. what I'm saying? And yes, we preach this is. word, but the word is alive and quick and powerful. Yes. And yes, it's, God. you know, sharpened in any two edged sword. It cut yes. me and it cut whoever else, too. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. It go both Stand ways. In you line. Know. That's right. Come on. Yes. So. You know, God is just so good. The word is alive and quick. And we just thank God for the mandate. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The call. Amen. I heard Apostle James say we are stewards. Right. You know, even as a gift to the body, it was like, and it's, it's mature and teeny, teeny, but... It was like a baby to me, you know, something that God gave to us <clears throat> to nurture and to bless other people with, you know. Okay, okay. And bless ourselves because I'm encouraged through this gift that God gave me, the gift to the body. Amen. That so be it. Yes. At times God told me, like, I'm like, Lord, I can't. He said, you can. You mature. You mature. Come on. Okay, come yes. on. Grow up. Jesus, okay, Jesus, so yes. I'm growing with this baby, a gift to the <laughs> yeah. body, and how the Bible said your gift make room for you and bring you before God's great people, ben, and, yes. and I'm just, if it's not for a gift to the body, I don't know if I'd be sitting across from you, yes, and yes, Lord. sitting in this studio and sitting before God's great people, the listening audience on yes, this God. evening. We take nothing lightly, nothing for granted. Come on. Yes. We just Praise God. humbled and honored. Because somebody said, God, if you could use anybody, you could use me. Use All right. me. All right. And whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So yes, yes. We just thank God for every opportunity. Hallelujah. Um, to be a witness of his saving grace for mm-hmm. real, for real. Yes. Amen. Yes. So, you know, we, we're we learning each other. <laughs> Amen. K-A-Z listening audience. Amen. Would you, um, um, as I said, some of you might know Apostle Barb E. Amen. <laughs> I'm learning her. I've uh, listened in on her broadcast at 530 in the morning. Amen. And I've listened to her on KAZ. It's all about sex. Amen. <laughs> and each each time I've zoomed in or been in her 
teaching, her presence. It's just been awesome. Like, why well, I didn't know this lady? Amen. Because so many people are like, oh, Apostle Barb, I know her. Okay, you know? okay. So God got people with it hidden in plain sight. Glory Amen. He got hidden figures. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I was sharing with her earlier how she has weight. Amen. In the natural and in the spiritual realm. Amen. Yes, you know, yes. in heaven and in hell. Amen. We don't <laughs> play with the devil. Yes. Amen. Come on. Now. Come on. We uh, live our life that, you know, when we rebuke him, he got to go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, We're not on. playing patty cake with no, the devil. No. We, yes. you know, not straddling the fence. I'm on the way here. Lord, have mercy on me. Having arrived. Yes. Amen. Yes, but Lord. Pressing. Yes, Lord. yes. Yes, we pressing are. Pressing for the mark. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. We pressing for the mark and we do have a mark. Amen. Yes. A mark of uh, glory, heaven. I see heaven in the view. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you know, a mark of helping people yes. and being a blessing and letting people know that God is not a respecter of person. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory amen. God. So, amen. Um, we would love to hear about your journey, Apostle Barb. Amen. I'm looking forward to being on um, your um, program. Amen. Broadcast. Okay. I love that topic. I, Amen. I love, it's I a, it's a necessary topic. It and, is. It is. You know, so... We, you know, not going to get on that topic. That's a good topic. Listen, one Monday, okay, we're going to be on there chopping it up, talking about it. Amen. Amen. But today we're just talking about gift to the body and, you know, just the blessing of being a gift to the body. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. The pros and cons because you know the word of God said that they that live godly gonna suffer persecution and we learn about our brothers and sisters and fellow heirs who suffered yes yes for the kingdom yes they did yes, you know they what did. I'm saying the, indeed. They, yes, yes, indeed yes yes were beheaded and you know mm-hmm. went through a lot yes that that, that 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 whole plan of the ecclesia could be birthed, you mm-hmm. know, and come forth, and still standing, twenty one hundred years later, we're here. Amen. But <clears throat> they were the ones that had to pay a great, great price. Yes. You're right. You're right. And so, uh, nothing to take lightly, yes. as you said. Amen. Yes, indeed. Yes, because it does cost you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And I'm sure for you to be sitting there beautiful and petite and, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, was able to, you know, we throw in a little bit of lip gloss and a little outfit and, you know, but yeah, you don't, people don't, you don't really know my story though. You know That's, what I'm yeah. saying? Yes, you like Lord. Lady yes, Flo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't really know my story, you yes. know, yes. so... We want to hear a little bit of your story on today. Amen. Well, uh, first of all, to the KAC Radio TV family, uh, again, uh, really grateful for the woman of God, uh, Lady Flo Duggar, having even suggested to me that I would join her today. It's a truly a blessing and an honor to be here. And when, uh, and I'm just going to, go ahead and drop a dime on her. When she called me, she was, uh, you know, we, we kind of talked a little about the Lord. And then when she, you know, told me, you know, she had confirmed everything for me to come, she wanted to, uh, us to talk about the ram in the bush. Yes. And uh, so in terms of talking a bit about myself, what I'll say, and, and as she said a little bit before we got on air, she and I were just sitting here sharing just a ministerial conversation, things that she's uh, encountered, and I've shared a little about myself. But when I think of Ram in the Bush, uh, woman of God, I think of my former pastors and leaders and teachers uh, when I still lived in Cincinnati who had been encouraging me to, you know, be ordained. Mm -hmm. And, And I moved here to the Cleveland area in 86, and when my husband and I, 
and I left that church that I was a part of, I had really grown uh, by leaps and bounds because I was born and raised in a Baptist church, and I had grown by leaps and bounds in the Word, mm-hmm. just so excited over the Word and, and the things that I had learned when I had gone to this new, more full, you know, full gospel ministry, something, you know, more non-denom, and they had a real right handle on the Word of God. And it was those four years there, which was um, a church in Cincinnati called Cincinnati Bible Way under Apostle Blue. It was those four years. And, and it's so amazing how things happen, as you and I were saying, because the day I had been a member at my Baptist church till I was 32. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and there was a series of events that happened that, you know, made me know. I was like, God, I want to go into another church. I want to get in another ministry, da, da, da. And the Lord kept telling me to wait on his timing. But I left that church at 32 and went to join the other church. And the day I walked down the aisle, when they opened the doors of the church, I hopped up out that seat. It was on Mother's Day that year. I hopped up, ran right down that aisle. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm finally going to join this church, and it's going to be on and running. And um, the day I joined, he reached over to shake my hand, you know, with his right hand, Mm -hmm. and he held it and said, and yea, daughter, even the Lord would say that even you shall go from this place, that you shall be here for a season. But you, And in my mind, I'm thinking, no, Negro, I'm not going anywhere. This is right. what I was thinking. Now, you know, I'm going to be honest. I was like, oh, what are you talking Don't start. Uh-uh. Go from this. I had been born and raised in the Baptist. And then you telling me I just got here one minute down here, and you telling me even I shall. I couldn't believe it. And who knew but God that four years later, my husband's job would transfer him up here, and then here wow. to Cleveland I came. But those four quality years were time, really a great time of training and teaching and just really being inculcated with the word. And when I got here, and Lady Flo is so much to it, but anyway, there was this occasion that the bishop over that ministry who lived in St. Louis, she... Her, she was married to a professor of theology who taught at Florida A&M. So they had a house in Miami and a house in St. Louis. So she was always back and forth. So in this particular season, she was in Florida. And at that time, I used to uh, do, I used to audit planes for uh, TWA. Wow. And so I had to fly different places. And, you know, like you have to check on how the flight went, how the pilot wow. acted. People. And you got to be incognito, you know, mm-hmm. or incognito for right. me. Right. Okay. So you got to, you know, you can't let on what you're doing, but right. you got to keep your little notepad and pay attention to everything that's going on. And you have to fly one leg of the flight first class and one leg, um, uh, coach. Wow. And so I was like, perfect opportunity. I'll fly down and see Dr. Whitelock and visit her down in Miami and just kind of sit at the feet of Gehazi for a minute, you know? Right. And um, anyway, I get down there. I think I got there on a Thursday and I flew back home on that. No, I got there on a Wednesday and I flew back home that Saturday. No, no, no. I'm wrong. I got there on a Tuesday. That next night, Wednesday, she was supposed to speak at this uh, family marriage and family conference. And her husband had just had surgery on his knee. They were waiting on the nurse, the the visiting nurse, to come to the house. Mm -hmm. There had been some kind of upheaval in Miami at that time, and all the visiting nurses were kind of like, you know, out doing other stuff, you know, and they they called her and said, we're not going to be able to get by this evening, but we'll drop the meds off, and can you, can we show you what you need to do, and can you take care of your hubby? And she's like, Oh, okay. So she calls the church and says, listen, I'm not going to be able to leave, but I got a woman here who's going to come and teach in my place. I was fit to wow. be. You talk about sell me, sell oh, me for a God song. God set you up. You talk about a set up, Lady Woo. Flo. It was because she, now this same bishop had been after me for two, almost three years, asking me to get ordained. Mm-hmm. So I'd be at conferences and I'd hear a voice and I'd run down the hall and go the other way. I'd duck into a closet. I was, I ran to, you hear me? Yes. And so when you're saying this about ministry and we can't get in it for the frills and stuff like that, I wasn't trying to get in it. Yes. I was not trying oh, to for do sure. That's this. a good sign. You know how, you know how we do? <laughs> yeah. You know, we ain't trying to, we didn't. Right. Find, I'm not waving my hand talking about duty. Yes. Duty. Honey, and so I'm thinking, I'm down here for just a few days of repose, warm sunshine, and just let her talk to me about the Word of God. I was so excited. And so for her to send me to this thing, I'm thinking, what kind of? And so anyway, I'm at this church. We have the service. I get up, and my my husband and I have been teaching and doing marriage seminars for 10 years at this point. So 
it wasn't anything like really new, mm -hmm. you know, with about, no, about seven years. And so I got up, I finished. The pastor of the church says, we're so glad that we had Sister Barbara to share the word. And if any of you would like to stay afterwards, I've asked her if she doesn't mind praying. He turned and looked at me and I was looking at him <laughs> like, and she said, and can we just get a prayer line? And so I'm sitting there, automatic pilot. I'm like, mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, what do they have? I said, God, if you don't get me out of here. And so he had, he had the bottle of oil on the, and he took the bottle of oil and he said, Sister Barbara, we're going to have the oil right here. And you can just anoint the people as they come. Three people got in line, Lady Flo, do you hear me? Look at mm -hmm. my fingers, three. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, this will be a quick work. I hurry up and pray for these three people and I'm out. And so the first girl in line was this young girl, and she probably was in her early 20s. Mm -hmm. And she was carrying on about having had to move back at home with her dad. And um, her job, uh, they scaled down on the job, and financially she couldn't afford to keep her apartment, so she moves back home with her dad. So I said, well, what do you want prayer for, dear? And I grabbed her hands, and she said, I just want to pray so I can get along with my dad and I don't want to be fussing or I don't want to be like the Bible says, honor your mother. And I said, oh, yeah, we got to do that. Mm -hmm. And she says, so I just want to have a right attitude. I said, well, OK, we'll pray. So I pick the bottle up and I take I hold this bottle of olive oil and I go like this. And I take a little drop and I look at her forehead. And I put a little dot up there, you know, right. and all the while I'm saying, God, if you don't do something real quick, you better do something to help me. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just in a panic. So I hold her hands and I said, dear Lord. That's how I started. That's mm -hmm. the only thing I can remember, Lady Flo. I said, dear Lord, I bring before you, and whatever her name was, mm -hmm. I can't remember it now. And when I knew anything, I dropped her hands, and I backed up like two or three steps. Mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you one thing, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. Wow. And we finished church at 9. I probably was in line for the prayer about 9, 10, 9, 15. Did I not get home until like 20 minutes till 3 that morning? Woo! That sounds like God. I prophesied <laughs> to the whole church. I had never done Woo! it in my life. This thing dropped on me. And people were in their street clothes. And the only bad thing I can remember is this couple was there. And I said, what do y'all two do in this church? And I said, y'all look like leaders. I said, y'all deacons, uh, elders, what do y'all do? They said, deacons. I said, get up here. And I said, and he, he, they both walked up, and I said, and get her hand. What you doing? I said, get her hand. I said, y'all's bedroom. I said, your bed. I said, it was as if somebody took a sword and went right down the middle. Bang. Ooh. I said, you on one side, he on the other, and y'all coming here and faking and playing. I mean, I didn't know how to prophesy. You know, like with Sound grace. Sound like a good one to me. Jesus. I, and so they both weeping. She then fell down on her knees. I, by the time I got back to Dr. Whitelock's house, she said, Oh, praise God. She said, you upbraided elders, so you know you have to be ordained because you upbraided elders in public. But they weren't in their official, right. you know, guard. Wow. And so I, they were in street clothes. And she said, you got a whole bunch of preachers told. You went off on the deacons and the elders, and you just tore up. They said, and every word was accurate. I was like, that is how I am sitting right here today, Lady Flo. Wow. Like, I, that ordination came after that experience. Because if I had... It, when she said that, and, I, and all the way back home, I'm sitting in the airplane. I took the very back seat in that plane. Mm -hmm. We were in a jumbo jet. It was packed. I took the last seat, and I cried from Miami all the way back to Cleveland. I said, whatever this thing is you dropped on me, if you don't take this stuff off of me and leave me alone, God. I said, I'm telling you, me and you, we're not, this is not going to work. Oh, I cried all the way home. You hear me? Cried. Yes. I just couldn't believe that God would set me up like that. Yes. Just drop. I had never done this to people. I would never. I, I was like, God, what is this stuff I was doing? I said, I know they say it's prophets. But I said, I didn't know these people. I What did I say? I, oh, honey, it was terrible. But she said it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's like a mighty move <laughs> of God to me. It, well, okay. they all thought so, Lady Flo, but, you know, my delivery to some of them, right. I was so, it was so, um, you know, I was really, it was really a sharp axe. Yes, you know? yes. And like I said, I never, you know, I was playing on these three little sweet prayers. Right. With three. They were going outside, pulling, bringing people in. I'm t the people had left because wow. nobody wanted no prayer from me wow. until I started with that girl. And I don't know what happened. The word got out in that room. Like I said, it was going on three when I got home. 
And you've been going forward since then. Ever since then. Wow. That is how this whole thing started. Yeah. Wow. And the father will set you up. And I was her ram in the bush. So that's when you had mentioned that to me earlier yes. today. I, I literally, I said, wow. Yes. I was her ram in the bush, you know, just to keep from having a blank spot in the meeting that night. Yes. You know, I, yeah. Who knew? But yes. God. Yes. Yeah, and you were my ram in the bush today. I didn't. <laughs> get to mention that and that's how the Lord dropped it in my heart to talk about the realm in the bush because uh-huh. I was sharing with Apostle Barb how I had invited, you know, reached out to a few people and people were saying the notice was too short or whatever. Uh-huh. And so my countenance was about to drop and Through our conversation, we were just setting up something to talk at a later date, maybe Friday or Monday. We said Monday or whatever. And I just asked you, and you were like, yeah, sure, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everything. So, And then my husband, God bless you, Apostle Addis Duggar. Amen. He was my guest on last week. Okay. okay. um, The the week before last, Mm -hmm. and we just flowed and had an awesome time in the Lord. Lord. Excellent. Amen. Excellent. And um, I started to ask him, but he was getting ready for a big job on tomorrow. And um, he was, me and him were sharing about one of the workers who usually work with him hadn't got back with him. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, had mentioned to him that my cousin's son just came home from prison. He did 25 years. Okay. I mean, he went in at 18, I think he's 40 now. But I had spoke with him FaceTime yesterday over my daughter's house. And he was like, uh, cousin Flo, if you, if, if you and your hubby have any work, he asked about hubby, and he said, if y'all have any work, I'm not turning down nothing. I, you know, wish you would consider me. Okay. So, you know, when I uh, reached out to him today, I'm like, well, is it too soon? Because he haven't been home a week yet, you okay. know. Okay, And so, you know, I spoke with hubby, and he said, yes, ask him. And he was like, yes, you know. What a blessing. He said, um, you know, just what do I need to wear and all all that I said would well, just leave that pretty boy stuff at home and you know <laughs> put some dirt in your nails and maybe leave a little cross on your eyes you know because we need that party you okay so he like well I can't guarantee you the pretty boy stuff but you know just how God provided and then my daughter's uh you know she has a friend that just came home. I mean, he'd been home a few years now, but he did 17 years and mm. kind of in between jobs. So he agreed to come too. So okay, God okay. provided the realm in the bush, Glory you know. God. So Glory I'm like, God. Lord, you just doing that. You yes, know what I'm yes. saying? And this is a construction site, so it's open. You don't have mm-hmm. to worry about, you know, um, nobody being tempted, a credit card or a fur coat. You know, I'm just saying. That's right. So, that's right. Uh, uh-huh, good. Yeah, so we just, we, God just is a provider. He and is. even when you were sharing and you were sharing how you came up to Baptist and went and joined the church and the pastor took your hand and mm-hmm. prophesied, mm-hmm. that was a leap. You know, from the Baptist to the prophetic. And Come on now. Yes, yes. yes. My Even God. with me, I was raised in the Lutheran church, but I, I met a friend of a friend who was a volunteer chaplain, and um, he was a prophet. He still is today. Okay. And when I got out, he started coming around him and his wife. We started doing tent crusades. And we yes, would just yes. be out there prophesying. And we would have house-to-house meetings. And awesome. the same thing with me went from. And then when I started being around them, I had just got fired up. And I was still in the Lutheran church. And I would be the only one in the church like, hallelujah, glory. Hey, you yes, know, yes. and they would turn around and be looking at me like <laughs> she must have went crazy yes. in prison because we know she was in prison. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and God just, you know, put me around people who had been where I had been and yeah. had overcame, you know, Hallelujah. and was overcoming. Yes. yes and yes. Um, it's been full speed ahead ever since then to God be the glory. You That's know, right. That's right. Even, um, 
you know, my addiction to marijuana. I was trying to hold door, and God took the taste bud from the heroin and the cocaine, mm-hmm. but I was trying to hold on to the marijuana like God. Now, Genesis say you created the herb, so let me, <laughs> please, you know, just let me. And the same prophet, Tony Crosby, he's been on the broadcast also. He said, um, flow to be a Christian mean to be like Christ. He said, can you see Jesus smoking a joint, marijuana? And I tried so hard, like, to see it, but I couldn't see it. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yes. And God used him. He was the same one who caught a pastor tipping out my house. Like, it. I forgot, you know, just a wrong time. And he asked me, he said, what are you doing, him Mm -hmm. and his wife and kids? They lived, like, across the street, up the street. And he was like, what are you doing? You're going to hell, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we, you know, you were sharing about how God used you sharply sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And so I needed that. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I got in the church, I came in just being saved from being a prostitute. So I had the prostitute attire. Okay, you know what okay, I'm saying? Okay. I had to see through and jumping and bouncing. And mm-hmm. it was the mothers of the church, sisters that I had got acquainted with that would take me to the side. Like, you need to tie that down. Like, okay. And, you know, they would bring boxes of clothes because I had been homeless. Mm. Um, me and my daughters, you know, the church right, walk. Right, right. Boxes of clothes, you know, for me and my kids and food. Yes, yes. yes. So, you know, God just moves so powerful in my life that I can't deny him. Mm -hmm. I can't deny, you know, that he's God. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just, you know, even you with the prophetic, I love the prophetic. You know I what do. I'm saying? Yes, I yes. Do too. yes. I, you know, and the so prophetic needed. is not just thus saith the Lord. This is prophetic. Mm-hmm. You know what yes, I'm it saying? Is. Yes. The um you can minister the word prophetic, dream prophetic. So that's one of the gifts mm-hmm. that is so mm-hmm. necessary, you know, in the Bible in the body of Christ. Right, the apostles right. is so necessary. Right. You know, those that are sent to set in order and you know the prophetic to speak into people right, life right. what God want to do or confirm right. would have already been said the teaching the preaching you know yeah, yeah. and uh, the evangelist you know and and all that is on you and in yeah, you you yeah, know what I'm saying sure. the mark yeah. of a true apostle yes okay and that's what God is mm. using true apostles because you know, we know that God has judged the church and, mm-hmm. you know, how the church doors are closed and how people are falling away because they were addicted to their pastors Come on and now. they were addicted to the dancing and the choir and the praise team and rarely picked up the Bible and rarely Jesus. had conversations with the Lord, you oh, know. Yes, yes. And so God is um, redeeming his body back to him and tearing down those idols of, you know, my bishop and my apostle (laughs) and man, okay, and the the Mm -hmm. choir and all of that. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. God just desires such a personal relationship. He is the God that reveals his personality, Jehovah. He He reveals his personality in time of need. If you need a friend, if you need a uh, healer, deliverer, he is the Mm -hmm. God that he's still in the delivering business. He He delivered me. Mm -hmm. Apostle Barb from so much. Hallelujah. Okay. That man couldn't do. No. Okay. I couldn't do. It's so exciting. Even when you talk about it, I, uh, I love your story about the, the church mothers bringing the clothes, the boxes of clothes for you Mm -hmm. and your, your children. And it's just, um, again, that to me goes back to your initial thought when we came on tonight about the ram in the bush. Because you only had the clothes you had, yes. but the father had other clothes available that were going to take care of that need. And I, I really, again, after you, we talked earlier today, you know, my mind just got to going. And I said, oh, God, I said, it's such a necessary thing for the body to really begin to learn how 
because when Abraham, yes. when Abraham got up at the top of that mountain with Isaac, and Isaac's like, okay, Dad, you know, where's the, you know, right. <laughs> sacrifice? As a matter of fact, he had asked him on the way up, and, you know, Dad's like, you know, God will provide. But we can't know the horror of that man already tying that son down to wow. that altar. That baby knew what was about to happen, you right. know? And um, the angel, like, you know, right on point, coming to stay his hand. And what, but what, what Abraham needed was a sacrifice. Yes. So it ended up over there caught in the thicket. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And wow. so those needs we have, when you called earlier, I kept thinking about that. And I said, God, this is where the body the, the true ecclesia has to grow up mm-hmm. because That's you it. you had clothes on, but the church knew you needed something else. Yes, you were at the Lutheran church, but the pe- preacher down at the Justice Center knew you needed to come to a f- real understanding of God in a whole different dimension. And so he met you down there in the Justice Center, and you re- you received I I I had been running from this ordination, and God knew he needed to tie myself, right. tie, get myself tied down. So he had me to meet, you know, uh, be down there with Bishop Whitelock and then her need to be with her husband meant I had to go to the church. And so wow. that, and it's like That's God profound. will supply the need that he has. Yes. I think most of the time we are always looking for God to supply our need. Yes. But the father already promised. He said, if you seek first my kingdom and all its wow, righteousness, he it. said, I'm going to add every truckload of the whole truckload of everything you need yes. that I'll, I know what you need before yes. you even ask me. Yes. But I think a lot of the times we get, people get discouraged in the body. You know, God didn't answer my prayer. He didn't meet my need. Well, if you were praying about a yacht or a seven day cruise That's and you didn't it. get it, then you like chill. Because right. I believe he is meeting the need or wants to meet the need of those things that are for ministry and for his kingdom That's and it. for the advancing of his kingdom. And a lot of the saints have things twisted. I love the fact that that pastor saw you come out the house or when you when he met, you, he said, what are you doing? And he said, you're going to hell. We don't have enough preachers and leaders and ministers That's telling it. people T-I-S like it is. We got to start telling. And uh Ebonics. Ain't nobody telling anybody they're going to hell anymore. Right. We have quit saying that. Right. And everyone is, as we were saying earlier before the show started, you we just can't throw everybody upstairs with God. Ooh, we just can't that do was it. Powerful. We can't do it. And, yes. and and I know ideally everybody wants to go to heaven, right. but you can't live like hell down here. That's ignore it. everything Jesus told you to do. You know you heard it. You know you heard it, and you understood what He said. And you're just gonna live any old kind of way, and you think that last breath. You upstairs. I don't know. Right. You know, and I know it's great if you confess with your mouth yes. and believe in your heart and all of that. But I'm saying there has to be a connection between the 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 brain memory and the heart memory connect in such a way that you adjust your lifestyle mm-hmm. because you fall in love more with him That's it. than the love of your own flesh. And that will make the change right there. That's you know? It. And it's needed. Amen. It's so needed. It's necessary. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because it's a false doctrine that is called inclusion. Yes. That everybody is going to heaven. And everybody is, is not going to heaven. Everybody Hell is Hell is real. And so, you know, I thank God for, you know, the wake up call. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's truly been a wake up. Yes. Yes. I thank God for the wake up call. And I thank God for my Damascus Road experience. Come on. Come on. You know, because there's a lot of voices and a lot of false doctrine that, you know, would test you. Mm-hmm. Do you really believe that you saved? Do you really believe, you know, you, you we doing this wrong and doing that wrong, but my soul is anchored. Hallelujah. Okay, in the Lord, okay? Glory to God. And that's why God needs generals. He needs what he have invested in us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He needs us not to compromise, you know, like we were talking about funerals and how the pastor, whoever, you know, they putting people in heaven that 
didn't live it. You know, I believe you could call on Jesus Christ on your deathbed. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But don't assume or don't pet people flesh, you know, because God is a God of the living. So that person has met his maker and our objective is to minister mm-hmm. to the living. You know That's what right. I'm saying? That's but right. too often just out of compromising or, you know, and, and I'm just learning how God said we have to love him more yes. than mother, father, sister, brother. Everything. We had to be sold out and really be vessels for God mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whoever fall off, whoever whoever we lose, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It costs you something. It does. You know, you you price. you really have to really die, like you said, to your own desires mm-hmm. and your own yacht and, you know, serving God mm-hmm. for anything other than Jesus Christ mm-hmm. and to please him. Because right. when I first got saved, you know, just, I, you know, church people, I love you, God, you so wonderful. And he just bust my bubble one time. If you love me, keep my commandment. And I'm like, whoa, what voice, where'd that come from? You know mm, what I'm saying? That's it, that's it. But that's God, it. Um, he, you know, he sent a comforter to help us. And yes. I thank God for the Holy Spirit that's Hallelujah. very real. You yes. know, and and yes. we're, like you said, they're not preaching hell. They're not preaching the dwelling of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I was hearing you talking about, um, uh, who was it, Abraham taking Isaac up to mm-hmm. sacrifice him. And I say he probably is walking up that hill like Yande Korshataya. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, like, God, you got to help me here. You know because what I'm saying? Because that was his only begotten son, too. That was his only that was son. All he, and he had been so, waiting 25 years. Right. Oh, you know this one. This right. one was truly. And sometimes mm. we take away from that part of it. He didn't just, you know, I know God going to do it. You know. Oh, come on. He was believing God to meet him, and we mm. got to keep that faith to believe God mm. to meet us. Yes, you know, at the point I need here, I needed God to meet me. I had such a busy day, you know, and somebody said, You don't get ready, we stay ready, we stay fasted up, we stay prayed up, we right, stay in now. the word. You know, Jesus said, unless we abide in him. Yes. Okay. So we stayed there, but, um, you know, he said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. We have to keep our faith in him in times like these because there's so much going on. I was thinking about, um, you know, I had, we have a cleaning business. I went to a client today and it was my aunt. I've been cleaning for her for years and years. She's 87 years old and she's like my worst client. Like if I tell her I'm be there at 10, if I get there at 5 after 10, she don't even open the door. She just stand there a minute like, what time is it? You know, I just be wanting to push her down. And that's, I, I was only late, okay, Apostle. He put this tooth in the air because I was coming here like, well, I'm always late, you know. But she do that. She just thinks she's just an OG gangster. Like, you know, she be going off on the bill collectors and stuff. So today I got there. I went in. Oh, Flo, I said, Shirley, I don't usually fix people coffee and tea and stuff for them and go get their pills <laughs> and, you know, all that. And she, girl, just do it, you know. So I get there, and um, somebody knocked on the door. So I went to her window. She got blinds, and I was like, can I help you? It was a young boy standing there, looked like 15 or 16, and he was like mumbling. Blah, 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 blah. I said, "What are you saying?" I said, "Can I help you?" And he still mumbled. Blah, 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 blah. I said, "I can't hear you." And he faced to my face to the window. It wasn't like he was on the back. Okay. And so he, uh, he <coughs> said, "Remember the the bus?" I said, "What bus?" You know. I said, "Who are you looking for?" And he's still talking low. 
And so by then, my aunt comes from behind me and busts the blinds open, and she just started going off on them. And he said, I, I, I want to see God do some work for you to get some money for the bus, you know. Mm. And my aunt, like, no money here, no bus. Get away from this house, you know. She said, go ask the man, a, a man for some money, you know. So he started walking off the porch, and I stood there to make sure he didn't touch my car. And he gave me a middle finger, like, all the way out the driveway. He got his middle finger, and I'm looking at him like, you know, your motive wasn't even right for you to be Mm. doing this. Mm. And then he started walking across the front of the house, pointing his finger like a pistol at me, like, you know. And so, you know, I just was thanking God that I didn't open up the door. Right, You right. know, I was thinking, because the way my aunt's house is, this is a garage <laughs> where somebody could have been around the side of that. But I just said how God knew that. He already had looked ahead. Yes, You Father. know, because I know me, I would have cracked open the door. Like, can I help you? Mm-hmm. He was young and sort of innocent looking, you yeah. know. Yeah, okay. And and um, I had just heard a message by Apostle was like, don't let your guard down. You mm. know, we have to keep our guard up, like, you know, but right. God just intervened, you yes, know, because yes. as I said, I would have cracked the door open or whatever. And I thank God my cousin, her son came home and he had cameras around the house and he was able to pull it up and see the guy. Okay, and okay you know, was telling me how he had just bought a new gun. And so, you know, me and my aunt talked about it, you know, these young people, this and that. And then as I began to work, God gave me a little, not burden, but, you know, for the young boy to pray for him. Yes, yes, yes. You know, to pray for him. And I just started praying for him that he don't hurt nobody and nobody hurt him. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And I said all that to say how sometimes the church can be so judgmental. Yes, I came from the streets, Uh okay? uh I was raised in the Lutheran church, they didn't really preach sin. You know, we Mm -hmm. did our hymns and your pre-planned, you know, message or whatever, stand up, sing this, sit down, you know, and go out the door, the pastor by the door, shake his hand. And if they did, I repent. I just wasn't listening. My mother just made me go to church, so I went to church. I couldn't go to movie, nothing like this. Okay. So I Mm -hmm. didn't know Apostle Bob. Right, right. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my first child by my uncle, pregnated by my uncle. My aunt gave me abortion with a rubber tube and a coat hanger. Mm, I had two or three abortions after that. You mm. know, I didn't know. I thought that you live with someone for six months. That's common law. I came into church with a boyfriend, a living guy. We shacking up. And the pastor, my pastor would be like, if you marry, raise your hand. You know, and I know they looking at me and talking about me, but I done brought the mentality into the house of God. You know, we married, and that's what I knew. Yes, I didn't know. You know, I remember one time when I finally got the beat of the praise music, you know, um, (laughs) you know, I had a young man come up to me and tell me that's not the Pentecostal shout. I'm like, and I still can't do the Pentecostal <laughs> shout like 40 years almost <laughs> later, you know. Okay. But so much I didn't know. I didn't know right. fornication. I didn't know, you know, so much. I mm-hmm. didn't know about mm-hmm. sin. Right, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I just thank God, you know, for my pastors. They mm-hmm. both in glory now. Apostle Bill McKinney, his wife, Lady Bishop McKinney, okay. Okay. poured so much into me. Yes. I was rebellious. If they said left, I went right. If mm-hmm. they said black, I said white. Mm-hmm. I would come and war and mean mug because, you know, I got this gangster thug mentality. I came okay. from the street, for okay. real, for real. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's how I was today. Like, Lord, you kept me because I would have yes, bust the door open. Oh. Like, you want some? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, God just... 
had to watch at my mouth and he like this with me like you is not going out there you know and get killed you know and i thank him because i have Mm. work to do to be you know killed by something foolish you know so so much you know that the church still can learn you know because People are being saved from the streets. Everybody is not church. Some mm-hmm. of the people church to church. That's why I had shared with you we wanted to talk about the ram in the bush. We wasn't going to go too deep on the Hebrew word of it and the Greek word. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. You yes. know what I'm saying? But the message that God will <clears throat> provide, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, that we, um, the Bible say, don't faint and don't get weary and well doing. And right. like you said, God have already provided yes. what we need. You want to go on the cruise, save some money, reach out to a travel agent to go on the cruise. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And a lot of times we get blessed by blessing and helping others. Yes, you yes, know what Lord. I'm saying? Yes. yes. And, um, you know, God just want to use us because the Bible says that the devil have come down in great wrath. He pulling out all the stops, you know, Is he, he not? Using, Is he not? He using mm-hmm. all his little weapons. Mm-hmm. He, we would be shocked Oh, yeah. You know, so that's why I'm learning to get them influences out my ears. You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. I need to hear God's voice. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to just draw closer to him and make those sacrifices mm-hmm. to get into my word, to pray, oh, you yeah. know, because... Time is short. The days is short. We, the enemy will have us just so busy oh, and, yeah. you know, so many distractions. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, And when you look at this younger generation and you got this younger generation and then you consider the influence, the power and the influence of music and movie stars, yes. video stars, rappers, all that. Our young people, it's like they, they are so tuned in to everything they do. Yes. And the, so the volume of the satanic volume is like maxed out. Yes. It is so loud. Yes. So now the church, we have to become more voluminous. We're yes. going to have to say, yes. we're going to have to call it like it is. We're going to have to, that boldness that Peter prayed and said, you know, pray that we be bold in the Lord. That boldness, we're going to have to have that level of boldness yes. to really override because our a lot of our young people are duped. Because that seducing spirit, yes. it really lures them in. Yes. I mean, it's so subtle. It is so subtle and wicked how it's luring them in. And, you know, the church, uh, so, and I'm saying that to say, based on that, I think it, it gives me reason to thank God even more for March 2020 until now. Because once he started dialing down all these kingdoms. Yeah. You know, the volume of all this noise and racket came yes. down. Yes. The movie theaters were closed. Yes. People couldn't yes. go into the nightclubs and partay. And, yes. You know, he, I mean, he, when the father said, oh, yes. <laughs> y'all want to know about what I do with the kingdoms? Watch my smoke. I mean, the father done pulled yes. the NBA, the NFL, the yes. honey, he done pulled them all down. Let's the see. political system, the banking system, yes. the educational, he has pulled every kingdom. And so all we can do now is turn and like God because yes. he now is getting our ear yes. the volume of the kingdom and the people of God yes. is now starting to be turned up to a level I think where the young people are starting to say I literally some of my young uh, grandkids and, and nieces are saying grandma or auntie I hear y'all talk about when y'all were young but I, I don't this what we have this is scary and in my mind, I'm thinking, praise God. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to be scary yes. enough that maybe you'll make an about face because I'm telling you, it ain't nothing for you out here in these streets. Yeah. Head on back toward the living God, you know, yes. or head to the Father for the first time, whatever. Yes. I, like, so we, I, I love that the Father, God, that, you know, I always say he's a bad boy. Oh, that, yeah, he that, is. That man, yes, I'm he telling, is. when he oh, pulled yeah. this, this one out the box, honey. Oh, yeah. Oh, he he had Satan's number on this one because I know the enemy, he thought he really corralled us in, but the father 
this one year has really sobered up a bunch of people. Oh, yes. A lot of people are really sobered up. Uh, yes. Flow, and yes. I'm excited about it. It's, it's wonderful. And the psalmist said, our God is in the heaven, and he have done whatsoever he pleased. Whatsoever. As you said. And even with the young person, you know, we couldn't take it lightly, even though he went on up the street or whatever, because these young people are killing, you know. Yes. I was looking at the Uber, the lady who was carjacked. These were teenagers, yes. Yes. you know what I'm yes. saying? So, And they are not afraid to kill or to right, die. Right, right. They, they're just, they, they, they're, that lawlessness is like just right. yes. I mean, rampant. And, and they just, they'll take a hit. Right. They're, they're just... Oh, my goodness. So you're right. It's and the Bible say, and we waiting on everything to be like it was, but it, the Bible no. say in the last days, perilous times is going to come. Mm -hmm. it's, it's people, and it's happening. We're you know what I'm right saying? With our own eyes. God is shaking things yes. like never before. Yes, yes. Okay, so we thank God. This has just been so awesome. Um, if you heard me giggling, I don't think, I can't remember when the last time I giggled so much on the broadcast, you know, cause you kind of had me a little scared. You said you, you know, uh, Jeremiah, you hard, you know what I'm saying? But I promise this has just been, it's been wonderful. It has been wonderful. Yes. 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 I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed you. I yes. Truly have. I've enjoyed yes. It. Mm -hmm. Just like your name. It's just a good flow. Yes. 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 Glory to God, glory to God, mm -hmm. yes, because sometime on the way here, I just be big, and I remember I used to run from this, like I would pull up the street at the broadcast on 71st and sit there and be crying and had to use the restroom, <laughs> I was so terrified, Yes, you yes. know, mm -hmm. and um, I just thank God for K-A-Z, amen, and yes. where God Wonderful. is taking us, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying, uh -huh. and it's, it's just great. I know our time is up, but the people of God are doing so much. I mean, I could go on Facebook right now and somebody doing a live, somebody doing a 12-hour prayer, mm -hmm. somebody, you know, preaching the word, uh, giving out food clothes. You know what I'm saying? That's we right, are body right. fitly joined together. Truly, and, truly. you know, we must be about our father business. So we want to encourage you on today that you are a gift. You are necessary. Amen. Man, so lift up your continence and know that God has a ram in the bush mm -hmm. for you. Amen. That he is that ram in the bush. Amen. He has what you need. He He's all wise. He's all knowing. He knows what you need. We thank you for your support. Amen. For your love, for your prayers. We ask that you will continue to pray for us. Amen. Um, and in times like this, amen, we all need prayer, amen, and we are praying for you, amen. We would appreciate your financial support, amen. You could give to dollar sign Floretta Duggar. We want to give a God bless you and a hand clap, amen, oh, to God. our bless guest, God. Apostle Barb E., amen, and we just hope it's not our last time on the broadcast, amen. We thank God mm -hmm. for wishing. She's carrying the order. She's carrying the joy, the wisdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Everything that she allowed God to, amen, do in her life. Amen. And God bless you. We'll see you, Lord will, week after next. Amen. In the studio at KAZ, we give to the body. May I just say, Please, I just yes. want to say, uh, woman of God, I'm excited. You know, you and I were going to do like a little pre-brief. Amen. to prepare for Monday, but for everybody that's listening, she's going to be with me on Monday Amen. at one. So we had today on Wednesday at, at six or five. Yes. And so we'll be together again on Monday at one. So I'm looking forward. Amen. Me too. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ is your savior, confess him with your mouth, believe in your heart that he raised his son, Jesus Christ from the dead and you shall be saved. If not, now when. Amen. God bless you.